Okay, we are ready to start. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Giorgio Bonvicini. I am a Carbon Reduction Manager at RINA, and uh, I have the pleasure to moderate for the third year in a row this workshop on energy transition of islands. And specifically, the title this year is uh, EU Geographical Islands as Leaders of Green Energy Transition. I'm happy to announced that this year we have the highest number of projects ever presented to the workshop. We have uh, uh, 10 projects. Ciao Cristina. And uh, uh, since we are a lot of projects presenting, we have quite uh, a tight schedule. Uh, as you can see in, uh, in the agenda, we, uh, after my introduction, we have uh, the presentation of the Bridge EU initiative by my colleague Fabio Rocatagliata from RINA. Uh, and then we go into detail uh, with uh, a set of projects focusing uh, on energy transition of islands, uh, let's say at island level, uh, presentation at island level. We have NESOI, the EU island facility, which finished a few months ago. Uh, re-empowered with the uh, sorry, pre result presented by Mario Cortese from R2M, <coughs> re-empowered, presented by Costas Caranasios by uh, Daphne, React by Fausto Science from Comet, uh, Janos from Nora Ganzinelli from Rina, uh, Stepwise by Ale Alessandra Montanelli from Singlock. After this first session, we have the break between 10.30 and 11, and then we start with two sessions more focused on specific uh, aspects uh, and technologies. The first one is focused on energy communities on island. We have the presentation of the Islet project by Francesca Battistelli from CNR, a masterpiece by Cristina Barbero, Berchidda Municipality, and the local rest by Emilio Ghiani, Cagliari University. Uh, after this, we move, to a to move the focus to the energy storage technologies for islands with two presentations from RINA. We have Sinogenes presented by Alessandra Cuneo and uh, uh, Smiles presented by Nora Ganzinelli. At the end of the uh, session of the workshop, we will have time maybe for uh, some conclusions, questions and answers. Uh, also, at the end of each presentation, we will have time for maybe one or two questions for each speaker. Yeah. And uh, since I anticipated, uh, we have a lot of projects uh, and uh, um, a tight schedule. I kindly ask all the speakers to stay within 15, maximum 15 minutes, allowing uh, the time for uh, questions and answers. Uh, I have a few slides uh, on... Uh, introduction to island decarbonization and energy transition, but I think we, we are all very aware of this, so I will be very quick. Uh, the main uh, aspect that I would like to highlight, uh, I, maybe I can go directly to the, to the conclusion. We know what are the main issues that islands are facing for their energy transition and decarbonization. We know uh, what are the uh, enablers that islands have uh, to become the locomotives of green energy transition, as the EU says and uh, uh, why uh, islands are important uh, to test, to demonstrate energy transition projects that can then be scaled up on the mainland. Uh, basically, the lessons learned that we had from the previous workshop and the from the previous works uh, in the last uh, years uh, are related to the fact that uh, uh, different islands uh, have different, of course, energy features, uh, and uh, so there is no uh, single technology that is suitable for replication on all, on all islands, so energy planning is, uh, at island level is very important. Uh, since there are uh, different islands and different needs, there are also uh, different possibility to test and couple technologies, for example, <coughs> renewables coupled with uh, uh, transport, ele electric transport system, both for vehicles, for uh, ships, boats, etc. Uh, renewable energy production plus storage, uh, plus desalination, which is also an important topic on several islands. Uh, we have also the management, maybe not in the Mediterranean countries, but more in the northern countries of renewable uh, energy supply to distribute and cooling systems. Uh, and uh, uh, the wide topic of energy communities that we will have represented today by uh, three projects, uh, since uh, uh, leveraging on the sense of community that islands have uh, and exploiting the potential for renewable energy production, storage and management can impact uh, on uh, the energy system of the islands, reduce the energy poverty, increase the security of supply, which is also an important topic on islands. 
and uh, then to conclude uh, we don't need to forget that uh, uh, all the actions that are good to be implemented for energy transition on the mainlands are also replicable on, uh, on islands, so energy efficiency first principle is valid also on islands and uh, uh, any type of energy transition action is suitable. So the mainland can, be, can provide input to islands for their energy transition and benefit from testing innovative technologies on islands for replication on the mainland and uh, the decarbonization of the EU and the worldwide energy system. Thank you for your presence, for your attention. We can start now the workshop with the first presentation by my colleague Fabiola Roccatagliata as a representative of the Bridge EU Initiative Secretariat. Please Fabiola. Thank you Giorgio. Hello everyone. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm here to represent Bridge Initiatives. I don't know if you know that. Okay, good. Um, yes, as you know, uh, Bridge Initiatives is uh, an opportunity that the, the, the European Commission gave us to try to create the synergies between projects, okay? So uh, this year, uh, Rina, last, since last year, Rina is part of the Secretariat of this initiative, so we are supporting the project to try to speak and uh, have a discussion about uh, common topics and try to find lessons to learn. So I'm here to give you some numbers, also uh, considering the last bridge brochure that we published last summer, and um, also because the topic of Ireland is one of the main topics, also as you can see in our roll-up. So it's uh, interesting to see some numbers. So this initiative started as a spontaneous initiative in 2016. Uh, starting from 2018, uh, the Commission has put the, the mandatory task inside the topics. So when you are applying for a project, for a proposal, you can find bridge initiatives inside the topic. So this means that if the project is financed under this topic, your project has to be part of bridge. Okay, so uh, this is the bad things that uh, unfortunately not all the project can uh, apply and can part of bridge, but you have to be um, financed in specific topic of the call. Um, at the moment, uh, as you can see, there are several uh, organizations, part of Bridge, there are more than 2,000 uh, uh, organizations involved uh, since the beginning, and uh, a lot of uh, money um, spent from the Commission for this opportunity. So we have this, this chance, we have to use this, okay? Now there are approximately uh, 1,000 projects ongoing. This number consider uh, project started until uh, July. So now with this uh, September and October with the new project, we have to update, of course, this number. But it's interesting to see that uh, in total, there were approximately 2,000, uh, 200 projects uh, in the discussion. So it's a really huge number. So these are basically the main topics. So the, the, the commission decided to put uh, the bridge uh, initiatives inside specific topic uh, related to smart grid, energy storage, island, and uh, digitalization. But not only, there are now a focus on also on uh, um, data management, for example, mm -hmm. and also um, renewables in general. That in this slide are um, summarizing smart grids um, topics. So, of course, uh, there are several benefits uh, uh, that we can see uh, in this initiative. So we have the chance for sure to uh, share common practice and lesson learned. This is really the main topic. Also because the project that uh, just started probably could face the same problem that prob the projects that are closing. So it's really important to have this chance and also to support the resolution of these challenges, okay? So uh, if you have any DAPs maybe in the new project, uh, maybe there are other projects that can help you in fixing it. So another important thing uh, that the Commission are asking us is the um, attention, the focus on the results, okay? So as you know, the project has the key exportable results. Uh, no one uh, uh, before or other initiatives uh, uh, moving in parallel try to take care of the results. Now the Commission is asking to 
uh, also create a database of the key exportable results of your project just to try to find a way to go ahead and not just uh, close the project and the results uh, was forget for any reason. Okay, so the, the commission is really asking uh, attention, put attention to the results of the project. Of course, a generate a new idea. Some problem could be a new opportunity for uh, other uh, initiatives, other proposal. So this is uh, one of the main things that for me, uh, the main scope, uh, the main goal for this initiative. So try to find the problems and then solution. Solution means uh, potentially other proposal in the future. Ne network with other colleagues for sure, and also knowledge sharing in general. Okay, I'm going to go quickly because uh, I know that uh, we have a tiny agenda, but uh, th there are really several uh, topics uh, and partner involved. Uh, you can find mainly uh, research and innovation uh, companies, but you can see there are really several other uh, players uh, in the market. These are part of the last bridge brochure, so if you want to see details, these are available. Also for our concern uh, technologies, uh, there are several technology in our project. Uh, technology for customers, uh, grid technologies, large scale storage, uh, small scale storage, and uh, uh, generation technology market and also other services. Because we have to also consider potential new business model, for example, for the project. So just not only the technologies are important. The project. So as you can see, the topics of islands and uh, all the technology that uh, inside the island can help energy transition are part of also the, the focus of which. Okay, we have a lot of pilots in, our, in Europe. Uh, yes, Italy, Spain, uh, France and Germany probably are, uh, also Greece, uh, all are most probably the most uh, used and common. So the, the commission uh, really asked us to, okay, Th that's perfect, but please try to also be focused on the north and uh, other regions. So also when we are discussing pilots, we would like to try to yeah, see also other regions, not so just Spain and Italy and uh, France. Uh, we, we know that potentially also for the type of company and the partners that we are involved in the project, these are the common one. but they try to ask, uh, to ask us why. Uh, not also other regions are, uh, uh, are involved or uh, the project uh, and the pilot. The answer is not easy, but uh, yeah, I try to kindly ask you to, yes, to start to, to think about it and uh, maybe try to find new pilots in, in Europe. Okay, briefly, uh, which is the structure uh, of Bridge? Uh, mainly there are four working groups. So every project, can be part of bridge, we can choose one of these, all of these, uh, part of this, okay? And uh, if each working group is subdivided in action or subtask or uh, task, uh, depends, uh, every working group call it in a several, in different way, but basically they want to be, uh, to go in deep in specific information, specific topic, okay? So these are, I can skip them, but in general, for data management, uh, the main focus now are uh, cybersecurity and uh, digitalization in general. Um, there were, for example, last year a, a common action across the several uh, working groups on uh, uh, data space because it's part of okay of data management, but also for the regulation working groups, citizen engagement working group. Okay, but yes, every working group uh, have it, has inside. Uh, sub-task or sub-action and uh, the structure is that there is a chair, a co-chair that is trying to coordinate all the action and the action have a, a action leader, task leader, okay? So we usually organize at the beginning of September a kickoff meeting of the working group just to show the, the, the years, okay? The, the idea that we have for the year and then for each uh, task or subgroup or action the task leader organized uh, specific uh, activities for, for this. So data management, regulation working group, customer citizen engagement, and business model, okay? So this means that basically uh, your project can be part of bridge uh, in several working groups. So also according to uh, the activities that you are performing, you can be part of uh, business model and data management, for example. And uh, it's really interesting because uh, you can find a pro project not only on the island, for example, 
uh, but you can be part and meshed with other projects in other topic, and this is really interesting also for the for the things that said uh, Georgia. So we have to, yeah, transit from uh, a generic uh, a generic system also to the island. It's really important to see what the other projects are talking about. So. Last slide from my side. Uh, every year uh, we have to publish two case studies that basically want to be uh, part and focus on a specific topic. So uh, it's another a parallel things of the working groups. So basically in that, in that specific case you have to see a specific topic, uh, try to discuss with them specific needs and problem, and then we have to publish uh, a case studies. Now this year we have published the case study nine and 10 uh, but uh, in the past, also the consortium before us that manages project, this initiative so published a, a specific case, case study on islands. That this, oh. this one, you can find it online. Okay, and it's really interesting because there are several projects part of these uh, case studies and uh, they discuss uh, specific chal challenges and benefits. The, 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 the report is not so long, so it's really interesting to, to read it. So you can find it here. So if you want to scan it, uh, you can find uh, the, the information bridge and the, the, the case studies online. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, please. I'm okay then. Is there any question? <laughs> please, Christina. <laughs> specific number from the commission so basically if you are proposing a project a specific topic where there is breach you have to consider a task for, for breach in your dissemination communication working uh, work package for example and you can put uh, the effort that you want so I don't know 10 PMs or whatever so of course it should be a leader of the task and a other partner can be partner of this specific task and in this case we, are, we will have rec we will receive money from the commission during the project life for this activity for spending this activity but there's not a limit budget uh, maximum or minimum budget that you have to, to put for specific activity so according to the effort that you have you can be part uh, actively be part uh, as a chair for example, or maybe just uh, a, an auditor uh, doing the, uh, the course, so no specific number. spread the information during the, but the partner can publish uh, online uh, the, the things that they want uh, on, uh, on these initiatives. We are using the channel of the CINEA, for example, for spread information about the activities performed, also for the annual report that we have to prepare every year for working groups, so they will publish online, it's part of the, the initiatives, but uh, yes, also the chair sometimes uh, is able to publish um, webinars or Work, uh, work, uh, workshop that they prefer during their life. So it's really uh, open. Okay, the commission want want this. It's not just close and structure, but you can, if you want, if you find I don't know a sister project doing these initiatives, you are more than welcome to go ahead with this project. Organize also separate meetings and separate event with them. Yeah, in the topic there is a specific yeah. sentence, and this means that you you have to be part. Yes. Part of the budget. Yes, but or maybe small small budget, but yeah. you have to dedicate part of the budget for this. And also, when uh, we ask to the commission, please give us the list of the project financed uh, under bridge. Your project is in this list, so this means that uh, at least uh, one person in your project have to be part in our contact list and uh, join uh, uh, meetings. Maybe say nothing and just uh, listen, but uh, they have to be part of bridge. Also because we have to report uh, the, the activities that we are doing in bridge in a specific report during the reporting period, closing the reporting period. 
So you have to, yeah, you have to be part and uh, join uh, meetings and maybe. Uh, and then the post team has to be part of the initiative in the post or It's up to you. Uh, post team at the end of the day of the. Yeah, of the yeah. Is, is it set up only, only uh, by the project? By the project. So or we are trying to engage you. Uh, we are trying to engage you and uh, contact you and try to say, okay, you are not joining any pro any calls. Uh, why? But of course, uh, we, spending, uh, we are trying. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we are, we have the list of the project and the list of the coordinators. And uh, if they are not able to see you in any communication, etc. But uh, mm. yeah, also because you have to notify to the commission that you are part of Bridge and you are, have to fill in this report. So otherwise, uh, we, we try, uh, then it's up to you. <laughs> because uh, the number that I show you is uh, it's a huge number to manage uh, project by project. But uh, we are trying, yes. Also because we usually send out a survey to collect uh, names from your project for, for updating the contact list. So in this case, I don't know, you see your name for regulation, the regulation have inside action, but you cannot uh, join any action or participate or just say your name or a specific action. This means that, I don't know, probably you are not joining anything. So we are trying to monitor if this uh, is not an easy task uh, because we have a lot. But uh, yes, we are trying to. We found uh, some problem also in this because we found project that uh, they are in the list of the commission, but they are not joining anything. And uh, means that, for example, for one project, uh, RINA project, they know any task uh, in the project for bridge, but it's financed as bridge uh, topic. So this, uh, okay, creates some problem with the PO, et cetera, but it's another story. <laughs> and uh, I think, thank you, Fabiola. I think it's, uh, it has been interesting to start with uh, a, cross-cutting project like Bridge, um, which puts together the various opportunities related to the development of research on these topics. Uh, just let me mention that in the survey that we uh, carry out annually in Bridge, we try to, <laughs> to map the progress uh, uh, of the research on different topics. Uh, and uh, we will publish the result next year, but uh, the, the interim results that we had so far are very interesting because they show from the previous year a, an improvement of the level of maturity of all the topics uh, and areas of research uh, related to the bridge uh, topics. And uh, to conclude on bridge, maybe we can ask uh, uh, you as attendees if you are involved in national project, so not EU co-funded project, but maybe some Italian or Greek project that uh, is related to the area of bridge, you can contact us and you can be uh, involved in uh, mapping the progress of the research on these topics. It would be very good for us and uh, maybe also for, you, also for you. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Fabiola. And, uh, We can move to the next presentation, which is on the Nezoi project. Mario, please join us. And you also have uh, 15 minutes. Thank you very much, Mario. Good morning. Uh, Mario Portese from R2M. Okay, so I'm going to present Nezoi that has been... Uh, I need to move the slide. Yeah, so it, it's been uh, seven months the project ended. And I think you know all uh, this, uh, this big initiative. It is a kind of umbrella initiative. Uh, it was the formal uh, coordinated su uh, support action of the Horizon 2020 program. And Nezoi, um, Nezoi managed to create uh, a, a facility, a facility to support uh, communities in uh, EU islands in their energy transition plans, interventions, uh, decarbo decarbonization actions. Let me give you some numbers uh, because, you know, the project now is ended. Uh, we completed our activities with the European Commission, with our beneficiaries. Uh, now it is time to uh, 
not to assess the impact, but to see and to uh, consolidate what we did and the results we uh, generated, <laughs> to build on them something concrete. And the nice thing is, uh, as I wrote here, and it is a nice story to tell, because leading partners uh, from the Nestle Consortium are still working together. And here we are. There is R2M, there is Rina, there is Silloc, uh, and other also partners that are working in this, uh, that were working in this project that continue contributing to this big effort to, to promote the energy transition and to support concretely these communities. Uh, I give you some KPIs, these are very macro numbers to understand the magnitude uh, of the Nisoi uh, uh, initiative. We had, it was a cask funding based project so we were basically uh, providing financial support but the difference is that we were not only giving money to islands but we were also directly supporting technically legally and financially all our 54 beneficiaries we had a huge uh, engagement uh, 166 applications in uh, two different open calls 54 islands or let's say 54 projects on EU islands got our direct support that on average lasted uh, 12 months. 70 islands within the European Union were uh, involved. So this means that projects, uh, some projects uh, may include more than one island like archipelagos. 12 EU countries were engaged and the activities, so you know, to, um, to mobilize funds, we were able to, uh, this is a proven data, to mobilize 455 million euro. The financial resources that were immediately available for the islands were 88 millions. So as you see, the impact, the results, as I wrote there, are our main assets and also the possibility to start to create something standard but this is something we will uh, talk about in the uh, afternoon workshop so as i told you NESO partners are continuing their cooperation we are working to formalize uh, something we call the nesoi alliance uh, that is a formal agreement between the main partners of this project uh, to to build on our impacts Anyway, as collateral input, uh, sorry, outputs, <laughs> as collateral outputs of our uh, support, you know, here today we are presenting these three uh, <laughs> practical results, let's say. The first one uh, that will be the main uh, focus of the, uh, the afternoon workshop at 4 p.m. in this room uh, is the Nesoi um, SEN workshop agreement, okay, that will um, say few words about this but we will talk there will be a dedicated workshop about this the Nesoi digital platform that is online and I give you also some KPI numbers and functionalities and the guidebook for replication so about the CWA I don't know if you know what we are talking about uh, CWA is uh, the CEN workshop agreement CEN is the European standardization body and uh, why this? Uh, we, we thought that thanks to the feedback and the, the positive feedback we got from our beneficiaries and impacts that we generated, uh, we had the chance to, to recognize for Nizoi a reference practice. So it means that we were able to prove that in 54 um, projects on New Islands, uh, we were successfully providing assistance, getting some nice results, uh, and also engaging beneficiaries. They were all generally really very happy about that. So we tried to, to make a standard, or let's say pre-standard, it is the CWA, the possibility to start discussing about the, the chance to create uh, a standard methodology to assist islands in their energy transition uh, interventions, projects, uh, decarbonization plans and so on. Why this? Uh, because the main drivers were related to, I have this here, um, we had a broad geographical uh, coverage, 
and also the technologies that were uh, employed and uh, used in our projects were quite different. Artuen, Rina and Silloc, the three of us, uh, we are the, mm, the partners that I mean, it is also a, a quite huge financial investment, the CWA. We decided to co-share this, uh, this expense, this part also of the, of the activities that we would like to continue to do together in the framework of the EU standardization system and the support towards islands. And in this also bridge has islands as one of the main key topics. Okay, I will go very quickly about this because this, ex this slide explains what the CWA very easily means. But we will have representatives from the Italian uh, standardization body that are um, uh, supporting us in, uh, in, in this interesting effort. So we'll just give them the possibility to explain you all what we are doing, the procedure, and also because we are now opening the first public consultation. And CWA means that we are not working on our own. Yes, we are preparing uh, documents. We are assembling the results, the reports, the data that we collected and generated during the NESO project. But then, then we need to interact with the scientific community, with the economic community, with the policy makers, with the public authorities, with a lot of other stakeholders, and of course from also the islander communities, to, um, to get to something uh, that is uh, you know, widely accepted, a consensus generally we, we need to reach for such documents. The NESOI platform uh, was the NESOI digital platform. It's a tool, uh, um, the NESOI facility is a lot of things, okay? It's technical support, it's uh, assistance that we provide in terms of legal, financial, economic, and technical support. But it is also a combination of different instruments uh, like also this platform that was our online uh, arm and it is still online, okay? There is also a QR code that you can, uh, you can check to uh, register. What is the, um, the platform? The, plat the platform started as a tool to, to make, to create a match between different needs. So we had project promoters, so mainly public authorities, but not only because in our beneficiary portfolio of islands uh, for Nezoi, we had also some private, uh, initiatives or private public initiatives and so on. So project promoters means projects that need assistance. It could be money, it could be technical advice, it could be a specific technology to make an a specific energy transition intervention in, uh, in the community and so on. We try to make this matchmaking. And there is a nice uh, algorithm working behind this uh, this tool that, um, based on similarity criteria, try to match who needs something and who is able to offer something in terms of financial solutions, technical solutions, technologies, uh, advice, and so on. There is a problem because here we should have some KPI. Actually, I don't remember the numbers because here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying. Because this is not the right presentation again. <laughs> but here I had some numbers uh, specifically. <coughs> that we had the number of uh, how many. Regis, uh, registered users we have. Uh, I think 500. 500, okay. yeah, yeah. My memory works well. And then uh, just help me because we have also hundreds of projects already uh, present uh, in the platform. I don't remember the number. It was like one. At or least three. the one applying. Hmm? At, at least the ones applying to the calls. At so least the ones applying. 166. Yeah. Uh, not all the applications, because but there are also kind of yeah. GDPR <laughs> issues and so on, but we had for sure more than the 54 projects we supported. So now the platform is already populated with some nice interim information. Um, 
and you can connect to that. These are some in you know simple screenshots from the from the the platform. The main functionalities, uh, there is also a capacity building component. It's very nice where we collected all the material that we generated during the project, but the, the intention is to keep that updated uh, over time. You see the projects here, these are some examples of the project promoted with the similarity indexes, some information you click, and you for some of them you can also access to crowdfunding campaigns. We had. Uh, the chance uh, to partner with the three different uh, crowdfunding providers. Uh, that is also a nice way to uh, to find pretty quickly not huge amount of funds, but funds that can uh, sustain uh, small scale interventions in small islands. Anyway, last uh, I go quickly on the replication because this will be also one of the topics that will be included uh, within the CWA discussion as the replication is the last part we will focus on the methodology standardization for the NESOI intervention. Anyway, to highlight the replication potential of the NESOI 54 supported projects we needed a tool, an instrument. What did we do? We created a guidebook for replication. It's pretty usual in new projects, okay, but don't imagine a kind of brochure that we print and then uh, it is forgotten on tables everywhere in the conferences or whatever. No, it's a pretty practical tool where the methodology that we used would be pretty solid and consistent to understand and assess uh, the, um, the replication potential of this project. What does it mean? How can we replicate same interventions un under similar or different conditions by defining replication criteria? We introduced uh, a, an index, uh, an indicator, the RRL, that is pretty much derived from the PRL. In this case, it's the replication readiness level. And uh, we selected 15 best practices from the 54 uh, NESOI supported projects, uh, just from these five focus groups that were the main uh, thematic areas uh, NESOI was uh, uh, divided in. So energy communities, energy planning like uh, SECAP uh, and uh, municipality. Uh, energy transition plans, renewable energy sources and technologies, e-mobility and hydrogen. That is a quite niche uh, group, thematic group, but it was very interesting. We had also the specific know-how, thanks also to the arena involvement on this. And some projects from that work, uh, focus group were included. Um, it's a nice tool uh, that uh, gives you the possibility to, uh, to understand how some of our projects were supported. So the focus is specifically on the NESOI support, not on the project overall. Of course, there are information about the project overall, but there is a, a focus on uh, the time frame in which NESOI support intervened. What does it mean? According to the different level of maturity of the project, NESOI intervened uh, to make very initial uh, studies or things that were more advanced because we, let's say, took over the project uh, in, a, in a situation in which there were already things that were previously done and then uh, we have the project to continue its progress uh, till the uh, implementation, the funding, uh, or whatever it needed. Okay, the, uh, these are some images of the uh, guidebook for replication. It is uh, available in six languages. So the main language of the NSOI countries, so, so mainly med countries, English, uh, and uh, Danish, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and that's it. The, um, no, Danish, no. No. No, sorry. But there is because, uh, anyway, there is also the possibility to make it, then you have to get a few islands in the northern counties also. Uh, I remember your colleague was pointing out the fact that we need to involve more 
northern countries in uh, in demo sites uh, and so on in our projects anyway this is available on the nexar website on the nexar platform and uh, have a look to it okay of course we have the paper copies but please let's use the electronic copies it's very nice to use we are available also to to provide the information uh, on the specific projects uh, and also on the indicator that you see here that takes into consideration different domains, uh, replicability criteria. Uh, there is a score for each one of them, uh, and then we define how much a certain project can be replicated uh, in a similar island, in a similar geographical context, but also considering the social acceptance, uh, the legal and regulatory barriers, uh, and so on. It's a quite simple indicator that we found really practical in order to understand how a project can be replicated. So we're pretty proud of that. And then this will be part of the standardization process we are doing with the CWA. We'll talk more about this later on. So don't miss the CWA workshop public consultation at 4 p.m. in this room. There will be also representatives from UNE. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Ah, okay. Ah, Galway. Uh. Yes. Okay, you know us. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we we are very <laughs> we are come up with the uh, RLs, so um, it's 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 a very interesting project. Unfortunately, we were not able to participate when the organization. I know. Uh, Very planned for okay, I don't know what they were in the future. I mean, it's it's a spectrum. There are plans. Okay, the first plan is, you know, from uh, these people, me, Giorgio, Alessandra, here, other people that uh, participated in the Nestle Initiative. It was a quite small consortium, but it's be with the best people ever, I think. <laughs> and we want to continue working with islands. Of course, we are applying to new calls uh, to try to replicate and to demonstrate the European Commission that we can scale up what we did in Nestle. But for sure, we also need some uh, proactivity from islands, like the Arale. Iron Islands, we had also some uh, nice uh, experiences in other projects with pilots over there. And I know that they are uh, in need of innovation, let's say. Yeah. Okay. We had Geofit, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 We were coordinating that project. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think we also tried to engage them in uh, Nezoi, uh, but at the end, uh, it was quite. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, of course, the we we needed to select the best projects, so we managed to fund 54 initiatives. It was pretty competitive, so. But I think that given the results of Nezoi, and the actually it was really very very quickly evaluated by the commission. Eh? The project ended in March, I mean, in, uh, maybe in April we submitted the final report. It is already evaluated, paid, whatever, something pretty rare in the EU project ecosystem. Eh? So I think that means also something. Let's see. Thank you, Mario. Any other question? Okay. Thank you again. And uh, again, as anticipated by Mario, <laughs> please join us here at four for the workshop uh, on uh, our workshop agreement, SEN workshop agreement. <coughs> now we move with the next presentation, also a bit out of Europe, because uh, we have an interesting project which is Rempowered, uh, presented by Costas from Daphne, uh, Costas Caranasios, uh, uh, who has also pilots uh, in uh, a pilot in India. So the topic of his presentation is focused both on European and uh, European island and the Indian context. So please, Costas, the floor is yours. Okay, I will try to quickly present the Empire project because there are a lot of technical details, and I know we're long time, but I'll do my best. Yeah. So. Uh, the project, an overview. Uh, the project uh, started in uh, July 2021 with a duration of uh, three years, three and a half years, and it will actually end in the end of uh, this year, on December 2024. 
Uh, it was a total budget of uh, 5 million uh, euros approximately under the Horizon Research uh, program. And uh, so, the partners, we had uh, 14 partners, uh, seven from EU and seven from India. We had uh, uh, three partners from Greece with the uh, ICCS and TUA, the National Technical University of Athens being the European coordinator. Uh, two partners from Denmark, one from UK and one from Spain. And we had several uh, institutes and uh, universities from India. So, the goal of the project was to develop a set of solutions called EcoTools for efficient decarbonized and rest intensive multi energy local energy systems. The work was to exploit synergies among energy vectors, increasing demand flexibility through customer engagement. The role to activate stakeholder engagement through workshops, events, and to provide insights and information. And the final aim to set up energy communities on the demo sites and to practice uh, bidirectional feedback to enable all the empowered project to tailor the solution to the specific needs of the pilots. So, uh, the first pillar is to increase energy efficiency, raise utilization and reliability, to foster sustainable and economic development, secondly, and finally, to exchange, replicate and scale all these uh, results from EU to India and back and forth, which I find it uh, more uh, really interesting uh, because of the differences of all the demo sites. So, the four demo sites, we had uh, one demo site in Denmark, Bornholm Island, have also some uh, northern demo sites here. Uh, Borholm Island has a long history of uh, uh, renewable energy sources. In, it received the 2019 Responsible uh, uh, Island uh, Prize by the Energy by the European Committee. And there are we have there uh, the integration of different energy vectors with uh, power, electricity, and heat that were explored. Secondly, we had Kithnos Island in Greece. Kithnos is a small uh, non-interconnected island. Uh, and in this demo site, we had a different demo site inside the demo site, which is a Hydrometra microgrid, which is an isolated uh, microgrid uh, from the island's energy system, which was the first microgrid that was set up in Europe in uh, 2001. And the case there was the optimal operation of the system and the higher penetration of uh, renewable energy sources. So, regarding the Indian demo sites, uh, first of all, we have the Keonjar in India, which is an area with uh, isolated uh, rural villages on the mountains. And there, there were already some uh, renewable facilities that were planned to be upgraded in order to improve the living standards of the community, to increase the power uh, consumed by the people there uh, every day. And also, biomass and biogas stations were planned to be integrated to increase uh, the power capacity of the microgrids. And lastly, uh, we had Goramara Island, which is a non-interconnected island, uh, which is a really uh, unique uh, condition of a demo site, it, uh, where it, uh, residents there live in really uh, poor conditions. They have uh, severe cyclones every five years, which when they come, they destroy all infrastructures, uh, houses. So it was really uh, challenging to face those issues there. And the plan there was to build a microgrid to electrify more than 1,000 houses on the island. So a quick, quick presentations of the core of the project, which were the eco tools. We had different eco tools, which are uh, software uh, coupled with hardware in all demo sites. Uh, so we had eco tools uh, on different levers, the power components, the energy management systems, and the integration through platforms and mobile apps to the cloud. So we had the uh, energy planning tools, uh, platforms, uh, uh, eco community, which, uh, which is a mobile app for uh, citizens to use uh, in the demo sites to manage their and monitor their energy consumption, uh, energy management systems, uh, electric converters, smart meters, and load controllers for uh, demand sign management, eco monitor for air quality monitoring, eco resilience, which was uh, uh, only hardware, which, which was the cyclone resilient infrastructure for wind turbines and PVs, and eco vehicle, which was an uh, electric vehicle charger. So, uh, another core of the project was the demand side management, which uh, needed to be implemented in the demo sites in order to improve their efficiency and their operation. 
So demand side management supports the efficient operation of local energy system and microgrids. And based on the analysis of the project, uh, there was a load classification that has been performed. So the DSM strategies that uh, were uh, tailored for all demo sites contain day ahead planning, DSM planning based on algorithms, real time uh, DSM based on price indications and emergency action based on the microgrid optimization. Here you can see uh, maybe a bit uh, confusing scheme about how <laughs> the eco tools worked for uh, in order to perform the demand side management we had the eco community which was a mobile app on the user's mobile phone eco microgrid which, da which uh, does all the forecasting and planning through algorithms and eco dr the actual uh, tool that uh, implements the uh, demand side management and all these operate through eco platform which is a cloud uh, application so in Borjom Island, Borjom is, uh, has a 4 megawatt boiler fueled by locally produced straw and four 0 0.6 megawatt electric boilers. So, and also there is a extensive district heating on the island, uh, which provides uh, heating to the uh, residents' airs. So all these uh, heat sources were combined in order to uh, better optimize the operation of the systems there. So the electric boilers were activated when there is excess production from PV in order to avoid risk curtailment. And the excess PV power was provided as heat to the district heating network, leading to reduction of the straw boiler fuel. Here we have some photos from the Borjom application in order to utilize the, flexibli the flexibility of their network. Try to be quick. And here we have those uh, some two case studies, one case with a high load and high renewable energy source production, and the other one with low load and high renewable energy source productions. So the results were, uh, as uh, said before, to reduce the cartel of rents, to reduce the usage of uh, the fuel by the, uh, by the boilers, and to store the heat energy in water tanks, and of course to minimize the operating cost of the system. So, Kithnos Island. Here we have some uh, um, data on the electrical, on the electricity system of the island. So, the goal was to optimize the and uh, optimize the efficient operation of the system for the optimal dispatch of the generation units. Mainly, the Kithnos Island operates on uh, uh, diesel generators in uh, ninety percent and ten ten percent. It's uh, some uh, PVs that operating, so the goal there was to optimize their support and to make room for uh, the integration of new renewable energy sources. Uh, taking into account also uh, future interconnections, because now, right now in Greece there is a huge project trying to interconnect uh, most of the non-interconnected islands, so we had to take into account also that in the future. Here are some more data on the Kithmas power system. So, the goal of the project was to apply smart and efficient techniques and technologies for energy management for the optimal management of the available resources and also to establish community engagement on the island in order to maximize the local benefits and accelerate the clean energy uh, transition in a socially inclusive way and also, as it is the case in most islands and also in Greece, to use Kithnos as a prototype to investigate the repli replicability in all non-interconnected islands in Greece. Here we have the ECODR uh, hardware, the demand side management application on Kithnos Island. Here we have some more photos from the testing and the use of the ECO tools. And also the mobile app, which, was, uh, which is now right now being used by the residents of uh, Hydrometra Microgrid, the small uh, uh, microgrid on the island. And Regarding Keonsar demo site, uh, there was a 20 kilowatt uh, uh, microgrid already being on the on the village, and the plan of the project was to implement, and it has been implemented, a 50 kilowatt microgrid system with 30 kilowatt PVs, 10 kilowatt biomass station, and 10 kilowatt biogas stations. There was also a lot of uh, other facilities like charging facilities and smart meters. Uh, and also, which is really important, the implementation of a livelihood program in the selected uh, villages aimed to create a sustainable uh, ecosystem. And also to increase the population awareness and customer engagement. 
And finally, for uh, Goramara Island, which is, uh, as I told you, an island of 3,000 uh, people approximately, the plan was to provide electricity to more than 1,000 houses, along with schools, shops, and the uh, health center. So two large microgrids were built, one uh, 155 kilowatts and 175 kilowatt using commercial equipment, and one small microgrid, 20 kilowatts with PVs, uh, was used, uh, uh, was uh, installed using green power developed technologies. And also some other uh, structures like charging station with local PV and uh, battery energy systems, electric bolts, and cyclone resilient structures for PVs and wind turbine, which as I said before is a really uh, challenging issue there. We also have here the application of uh, demand side management on uh, Goramara Island. And to summarize, uh, here we have some uh, photos of the of the software and of the hardware. Here you can see eco-resilience, which are the structures that are resilient to cyclones. Uh, there's also for PVs, and also there was also constructed the experimental wind turbine, uh, which was also resilient to cyclones. Here are some more photos and also from uh, test labbing of the tools in ISSS, NTUA and in uh, the universities in India. And to summarize, Reempower were presented in more than 30 events across Europe and India. Uh, eight scientific papers have been published in scientific journals and magazines. Nine scientific papers have been published in conference proceedings. One scientific paper was awarded the Best Conference Papers Award for the IEPS General Meeting. Indian demo sites, Goramara and Keonjar, were used as case studies for the student projects of the Off-Grid Energy System course of the THI University. One exploitation workshop was organized. And uh, from my side, and as I think for all the partners, which was what was really important was the exchange of knowledge between EU and India. Uh, so we had six, six research visits on 2022 and 2023. And several more are planned right now. Uh, colleagues from uh, NTUA are back again in uh, the demo sites in India to finalize all the technical issues. And we also had two intercontinental, intercontinental consortium meetings and site visits, one in February 2024 in India, where we're really happy to uh, receive the hospitality of the Indian partners. And on June 2024, where we uh, uh, give back that uh, really nice hospitality in Greece, in Athens, and in Kithnos Island. So yeah, uh, knowledge exchange, exchange of technical uh, knowledge, exchange of uh, cultures, and to really see the, the huge differences even between uh, the northern and the southern demo sites in, uh, in EU, and also the huge differences between the actions and how we work here in Greece, in Greece and in Europe in general and in India. And the highlights of the project were the creation of an en energy cooperative society in Kenjar, which is now operating, managing called the microgrid that was installed there, managing the biogas and uh, biomass stations. Uh, where people were involved, uh, local people were appointed as uh, technical expertise, receiving technical knowledge through the project and also uh, community leaders were came up to support uh, this uh, cooperative society, uh, which is really important. And finally, last but not least, uh, approximately 4,000 residents in Indian demo sites were provided uh, with uh, clean uh, electricity, so there was a huge uh, social benefit as well. So yeah, that was it in general. You can find us in all uh, social media networks. So thank you very much. You have any questions, please. Thank you, Costas. Uh, uh, before checking if there is any question, I have more uh, a, a comment because uh, as Rina, we are very active uh, in working with uh, international financial institutions like uh, World Bank, EBRD, uh, etc. And I see a huge potential for replication of the concept you have developed in India uh, in uh, rural, non-interconnected uh, areas. I have worked uh, with a couple of projects in Ethiopia and Sudan which had similar characteristics and it's very interesting also considering the resilience to climate change effects uh, of the devices that you are using. So maybe it's an input for <laughs> your exploitation. I don't know if you have any care uh, focused on this, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, we had the resilient structures in the... Uh, okay. 
that were used in also in Keonjar and Goramara, where the island which is uh, affected by cyclones. But we also tested this in Kithnos, which the, we have also really uh, intense winds on the, during the year. So the experimental wind turbine was also installed in Kithnos with this uh, resilient structure. So we had the connection of the two. Very interesting. Thank you, Costas. I is there any other question for Costas? Yes. Please, Fausto. From the air quality? Yes. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, there was a huge difference be between uh, the EU demo sites and the Indian demo sites. So, yeah, we, had, uh, we measured some basic uh, uh, air quality monitors like uh, NO, X okay, I'm not really uh, <laughs> uh, expert on that, but yes, we got some results and we could see that, I mean, when there was uh, an increase in uh, atmospheric pollution, this hardware also had the uh, had an alarm on it. It was installed on schools, and so it had a little alarm that it used to uh, alert uh, students and the uh, people there that oh, the air quality is not good. Yeah. Cool. Thanks again. Ah, please, please, sorry. <laughs> You mean in Indian demo sites, mainly or in general? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all uh, four demo sites were really different. I mean, in Kionzar demo site, which is a, a rural in the mountains, and the, there is a stronger sense of community, the results were were real good. And in our visit there, also we found some real good results. I mean, we did a meeting with the local people there, with the local leaders of the community. Uh, like an assembly of the of the village, so there the energy cooperative was established. In the other demo site, which is really affected, let's say, by the cyclones, uh, and as I received it, the and from the results, I can tell that uh, there was not such strong sense of community because people were coming and going. The island was being uh, deserted, and people were constantly leaving the island. So the results then in community engagement were not really uh, as we would like to be. And in Greece also, uh, in, in Kithnos, there are different results. I mean, we had a, a seasonal uh, a settlement, which is Gaidoromadra, with people only coming for the summer. So it was also difficult to engage them. But we did some good work there, yes. Thank you, Costas. <laughs> and now, we move to another completed project, the React project, uh, the second, uh, no, if possible, yeah. Madam, take your time. Thank you. And we move to the presentation on the React project uh, given by Fausto Sainz from Comet. Please, Fausto. Hello, I'm Fausto Sainz, and um, at Comet we love islands, basically. So I'm going to skip the first, uh, introduction because we all know what are the, the needs for, for, for islands and uh, I'll try to gain time by being, being fast. Um, the thing I would like to say is that um, at React we have three main islands as the pilots and five follower islands. The pilots were in Iran, is a, in Iran Islands and was in Ismore that was in off the coast of, uh, of Ireland. Then we have La Graciosa, which is on the coast of Lanzarote in Spain, and then El San Pietro off the coast of um, the Sardinia. Thank you. <laughs> the, the thing is, these pilots are very small islands, very, very small islands. So the replication of the islands for the bigger ones, like Mallorca, La Reunion, Gotland, and, uh, and um, that was what they chose, because it was very small, and we can, as someone mentioned before, you can have the mainland has improved as inspiration for the island and, and the other way around. So they, they, can, they can serve like that. So my presentation is going to be more about results and more about what the engagement with the islanders uh, was about and what we did uh, in, in that sense. No? So we have a holistic approach for target energy despatch control actions, both automated and manual. You have to 
think that we just we develop also an, an application for users in the, in the, in the, in the pilot to monitor the, the energy. It was a real-time generation of unload forecasting for optimal grid balancing. So at the same time, the consumers have information about what were the production and the consumers. From the point of view of the, the, the control, they have also, they could see what were the consume and the and the consume the consume and, and the problem of uh, each of the of the buildings. In noted heat pumps and PV systems to be managed at community level, you can see in the picture that we have this uh, sun with PV on the roof. This is in Aran and this is in, in, in La Graciosa. The energy storage was another important issue and uh, we have the the primary of high capacity and environmentally friendly lithium ion this, uh, and aluminum carbon batteries and conventional uh, benzene is is and by related to the of the sun and power to the sun. The energy storage was another the important issue. And uh, we have yeah, the, 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 the primary of high capacity and environmentally friendly lithium ion uh, and aluminum carbon batteries and conventional benzene. So the objective of our social research is in the lack of the sun and power to the sun. The energy storage was another important issue. And we have the, the primary of high capacity and environmentally friendly lithium ion and aluminum carbon batteries and conventional benzene. So the objective of our social the energy storage was another important issue, and uh, we have the, the problem of high capacity and environmentally friendly lithium ion. And these were private buildings, but also we have uh, community and municipality buildings that were run by by people on them. So we use interviews, we use a standard tool which is called CAM, a technology as a CAM model, and also they use SUS, which is also uh, another um, standard tool. Well, the results of the interview shows that most participants didn't know about demand response. This is a section made for San Pietro, San Pietro uh, at the time of the interviews, and uh, they also stated that they wanted to learn more. It's also true that in Aran Islands, we have a previous project. In Aran Islands, as my colleague knows, they are quite used to innovation projects from the European Union. The idea of it was uh, another project that included This community, which is a very close community, because in is more is a very small island too, but all of them, the, the, the residents are very used to this kind of help of participating in, 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 in projects that usually benefit themselves. Because the, at the end of the day, the devices and technology get installed and it stays there. So, for example, we also install some, uh, I think, a heat pump in the recycling, recycling uh, factory, so it stays there and they, they get benefit. In all islands, they all perceive themselves as knowing about energy savings, energy savings I'm talking about, and uh, but not much about any energy management and storage. Of course, uh, not many people have bat has batteries in their, in their own uh, places and other forms of storage like uh, uh, very pools and other alternative things. All were concerned about energy prices because of the price, isn't it? And uh, I mean, especially in more, uh, in this more that they have a strong sense of mental health in terms of community. I mean, the economical drive is a very important one. We must not forget that. This is always this is related to everyone. In San Pietro, environmental protection and savings, both economic and energetic, were mentioned as some of the positive actors of technology. And in La Graciosa, the, this is uh, quite interesting because they were very, very much reluctant to participate in the project. Yeah, you must consider it's a very small village of the coast of Lanzarote. And eventually we, we found out the only way to get to them was through a trusted person. In the case, it was the mayor of La Graciosa. Because we did, it took us a long time to get uh, people that wanted to participate in the project. And now, regarding the devices, uh, as in the previous project, we developed an application as I one was to control the demand response on the grid, and the other one was for users to, to, to get informed. They could not control with the device, they could not control the, the um, generator, the PV, PV, PV basically. And um, we evaluated um, four uh, main points. We must say that all have basically positive attitudes about the, the application. 
and uh, we explore the specific instruments, specific to use, attitudes towards the reuse and content to use. As I say, minor differences were encountered. These four uh, indicators came from the TAM and from the COVID. So um, the results from TAM show the positive attitude towards the React solution in all these points, and minor differences were encountered. You can see here the different, uh, different islands. So for example, in San Pietro, they were quite happy, quite, they found it quite easy. I must say that there is also an important data here. It's, it's all on the web and the, on the public papers. Some of the islands were populated by not so young people, and some of them might be reluctant to use new technology. So for example, that is the case of Lorenzo. So you have a lot of people that are uh, detached. So the difference, as you can see, in, in San Pietro, they, it's noticeable that in San Pietro, they, I mean, I don't know, Qualities are quite high anyway. In San Pietro, they were much more positive about the use of, of technology, while in La Graciosa, uh, they were not so. I mean, they were enthusiastic, they were all positive, they were all about four point creation, so it was good. But this is something you have to consider when, when developing, and that is quite important to develop an application that is easy, easy to use for them. This is super important and provides the right, the right uh, information. More, more results on the, on the SAS uh, and, uh, well, San Pietro respondents have a better opinion over the present, over the same, the present. <laughs> so, and in it is more, uh, the users uh, were highly better than La Graciosa, but again, they, they were all, I mean, all punctuations were above four, so it, the scale goes up to five, so it is better a positive punctuation. So we have to say that, um, React also participated at Bridge. I don't know how I ended in the meetings, to be honest, but I didn't attend the meetings. And we <laughs> that is a long time ago because React finishes last year in June, so it's been a long time. And we did participate in, 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 in my React also participated at Bridge. I don't know how I ended in the meetings, to be honest, but I didn't attend the meetings. We published a white paper, this is also in the That is a long time ago because React finishes last year in June, so it's been a long time. And we did and, participate um, in, in, in all the results. In my React yeah, also participated at Bridge. I don't know how I ended in the meetings, to be honest, but I didn't attend the meetings. We published a white paper, this is also in the a long time ago because React finishes last year. Or maybe it was the daily contact me or contact someone on the website. And this is for four minutes. I hope I was fine. Yes, nine minutes and a half. So thank you also for the contribution to <laughs> reduce the delay. But from my side, Fausto, it's interesting uh, uh, to see how you have also addressed the, the social barriers to energy transition of islands. Um, and uh, it is interesting that you anticipate some, at least uh, two of the topics that we will discuss later in the session, because uh, uh, Emilia will talk about the integration of heat pumps uh, in uh, energy communities on islands, uh, and uh, Nora and Alessandra will talk about energy storage topic on islands. So you have, uh, thanks to the results of your project, you have anticipated also some of the topics we will discuss. Is there any question? No. Ah, not that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's why. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you again, Fausto. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we can move to the next presentation before the break. Oh, this no. I see. It's better to have it uh, after the coffee break, probably. It's 10.30. Uh, so I kindly ask to all of the speakers uh, to be fast after the coffee break because we have two presentations from the first session that need to be moved to the second session. So thank you very much and have a nice coffee break.